Welcome to the Terra Dome. It's Corbett Sports Center. It's Aggie basketball. Check out the MEAC's hottest basketball team, North Carolina Anti State Aggies. It's Aggie Pride. The women, they get it in. The men, they come to win. You can see all the action right here on NCATAggies.com. It's Aggie basketball. Terrell Robinson, Cy Alexander. It's explosion. It's excitement. It's Aggie basketball. Welcome to North Carolina A&T State University. We're in Corbett Gymnasium at the Cal Urban Don Corbett Court where the North Carolina A&T Aggies play host to the Bison of Howard. I'm Walter Johnson along with Terry Cooper. Terry, we had a first, a great first game. Barry went down to the wire, and we expect much of the same in this men's basketball game. Well, both teams are coming in trying to get another key victory here in the mid East Athletic Conference early in the MEAC season. So we're going to see great basketball between Howard University and the hometown of the A&T Aggies. We're ready now, folks, for our, our starters. And we'll have the starting lineup first for Howard. We'll turn it over to John Allen. At forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Glenart, Maryland. Number three, Prince Okoro. Also at forward, a 6'7 senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Number 13, Mike Phillips. At center, a 6'11 junior from Norfolk, Virginia. Number 32, Alfonso Leary. At guard, a 5'11 sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia. Number five, Simeo Frazier. And at guard, a 6'4 senior from Hampton, Virginia. Number one, Trey Lee. The Bison are led by head coach Kevin Nickelberry, associate head coach Keith Cortraver, assisted by Travis Lyons, director of basketball operations, Brandon Evans. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for your North Carolina A&T. from Conover, North Carolina, number one, Adrian Powell. Also at forward, a 6'7 freshman from Silver Spring, Maryland, number 34, Bruce Beckford. The man in the middle, a 6'8 senior from Princeton Junction, New Jersey, number 31, Austin Winter. At guard, a 6'3 junior from the Bronx, New York, Number 30, Lamont Middleton. And at guard, a 6'4 senior from Fort Myers, Florida. Number 5, Gene Louise of Howard University and North Carolina A&T. As we just heard the starting lineups of both clubs, it seems that this is going to be something that's going to be one of the battles that's going to be early in this game. And it's a lot to see, especially with the coaches of Coach Sal Alexander in his first season at the helm of the North Carolina Anti Aggies and the coach of the Bison, Kevin Nickelberry, in his third season for Howard University. As we're getting ready for the tip off. For the Bisons, number 32, Alfonso Leary. Number one, Trey Lee. Number 13, Mike Phillips. Number three, Prince Okoro. And number five, Samuel Fraser. For the Aggies, number 30. Number 30 for Lamont Middleton. 34, the freshman, Bruce Beckford. Jumping off, number 31, Austin Witter. Number one, Adrian Powell. And number five, Gene Louise me as the Aggies. Get the first tip, and it's in the hands of their point guard, Lamont Middleton, who's having a fabulous season in his first season. Junior college transfer out of Wake Tech in Raleigh, North Carolina. Lamont Middleton is playing fantastic basketball so far for the Aggies, and we're hoping that the play of, that he has been exhibiting and the play that, that um, Adrian Powell is being exhibiting will carry over into today's ball game. Long jump shot early 
for from uh, Middleton, no good. And rebounded by Leary. Leary is the 6'10 junior out of Mari High School in Norfolk, Virginia. Howard is moving the ball pretty smoothly. Plenty of time on the shot clock. That's in the hands of Samuel Fraser. Mid-range shot by Trey Lee. And that's the first two points of the game. The correction, Prince Okoro. And Okoro, great shooter, six foot five, sophomore out of Greenbelt, Maryland. Austin Witter, three-point shot, rolls in and out. Second rebound by Leary. And here comes the Howard Bison. And we have a delay, uh, quick pause in the game as the officials are talking. And it's a readjustment on the shot clock. It was only a two-point basket by Prince of Coral but for the Howard Bison. So after that small adjustment, the ball goes back in bounds. Now it has a Samuel Frazier. And now we have an offensive foul on the Bison. It's going to be on number 13, Mike Phillips, 6'7", senior out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Yeah, off the ball foul that time by uh, Mike Phillips. And um, just a, a, an illegal screen. He stepped out on the screen and didn't get his position, didn't hold his position. Well, the officials are going to be watching for those uh, moving screens. As Aggies get the ball in the hands of Bruce Beckford. Has a take shot, and Beckford has been showing up as a freshman. I'll tell you what, Be Beckford rolls up that time from about 15 feet and really knocked that jump shot down with a, in a, with a pretty stroke. Great mid-range shooter for the freshman. Uh, he's been playing very well for Coach uh, Sy Alexander. There's a steal by Adrian Powell. Strong move by Powell. Adrian Powell. And Powell does what he always does for Coach Sy Alexander. Play the passing lanes. Uh, six foot six senior out of Conover, North Carolina. Well, Powell and, and Middleton have been a heck of a one-two co scoring combination thus far for the Aggies. And they've picked it up even more in uh, conference play. And Coach Alexander is uh, not putting all the load on those two, but he expects a lot of those uh, players within Middleton as well as Powell to provide some of the scoring opportunity. That's three-point shot for Frazier. is no good. And it's off in, in the hands of Austin Witter. He gets it up to Gene Louisme. Strong move by Louisme. Shot's no good. Re strong rebound by Trey Lee. And that time, Louisme just kind of forced that shot instead of getting a, a real good look. But what an athletic play by Austin Witter to control that ball and be able to take it down the floor. And the second shot by Lee is uh, a correction. Okoro is no good. Rebounded by Powell. Oh. So we got a pretty fast pace early in the first, the first half. A strong move and count the basket. And second basket in a row for the freshman Bruce Beckford. Well, well Beckford is uh, trying to establish his presence in this ball game early, uh, understanding that this is one of the games he's going to truly be one of the big men on the court. And uh, just doing a good job from that mid post position and that low post position. And T now up by four, six to two with 16.49 remaining in the game. And now 7-2. Beckford has started off hot. And that's uh, five quick points for the freshman. A quick substitution for Howard as Phillips goes out of the game and is replaced by number 25, Theodore Boyomo, the 6'9", redshirt sophomore out of Cameroon. Well, Phillips with two quick fouls in the ball game, and they can really ill afford to have him in any, any deep foul trouble. And Howard is being very patient. Moving the ball as the Aggies go into more like a matchup zone. That's 10 seconds on the shot clock. They get it back to the hands of Frazier. Frazier waits on the pick and roll screen. Gets over to Leary. Strong move by Leary. And no good in a shot clock violation. And that's great defense by the Aggies. What wonderful defensive possession that time by North Carolina A&T. Good contest on the shot by Austin Witter without committing the foul. And if A&T can continue to play like that, they'll, be, they'll have a real deep run into this NBAC regular season race. 
Well, they started that run uh, after a disappointing loss against Bethune-Cookman University to come back and uh, trounce Florida a and by 20, you know, a comfortable lead and a comfortable game. So uh, we just saw an offensive foul this time. It's on number five, Gene Louisme. As we go into our first official timeout, 15 minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the first half. The Aggies are ahead 7-2 over the Howard University Bison. And we'll be back. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. Check out Aggie Swimming as the ladies of North Carolina A&T play host to Campbell University Fighting Campbells. All the swimming action is Friday, January 25th. It starts at 5 p.m. from the Aggie Pool. Check out the swim team and support the Aggies. Watch at NCATAggies.com. And we're back here at Corbett Sports Center. 7-2. The Aggies have an early five-point lead over the Howard Bison. I'm Terry Cooper here with Walter Johnson, and so far, Walter, we've seen the Aggies come out quickly, uh, not only on defense, but actually executing on offense and in quick five quick points by the freshman Bruce Beckford. Well, Beckford, Beckford has been a, 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 a true spark early in this basketball game, and if he can keep that kind of play up, he can be a major factor down the road, not only in this game, but in all the MEAC contests they play this year. Well, the Aggies apply a little bit of pressure to the Bison, uh, trying to make sure they stall. They get it inside to Leary. Tough shot by Leary is no good, and it's deflected, and the ball stays with Howard. That's a great move by Alfonso Leary. Just uh, fell a little bit short, but the ball stays with the Bison. They get it in bounds. Now get the ball into Trey Lee back to Frazier as the Aggies stay with the 2-3 zone. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the Bison. Three-point shot by Trey Lee is long and rebounded, but actually on the line, so the ball stays with the Bison. But the ball, the ball did not hit rim, so the, the shot clock does not recycle. It'll stay 17 seconds remaining on the shot clock. A quick substitution, number four, Anton Dickerson comes in the game, replacing Trey Lee. Once again, 14 seconds on the shot clock for the Bison. Now the Aggies move. Seemed like a matchup zone as Frazier penetrates. Great pass from Frazier into Boyomo. So that the Bison are able to Actually penetrate and score easily on the 2-3 zone by the Aggies. Elevised pass and a quick foul. This time the foul will be on number one. On Powell, his first foul. And that's just great defense and head awareness by Okoro. So the ball goes back to the Bison. 14 minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. The Aggies hold on to a 7-4 lead here at Corbett Sports Center. Good ball rotation by the Howard Bison that time. Shot inside by Howard is good. And that was a Gary, I think. Alfonso Leary. Leary, yeah. So Leary is trying to make an inside presence for the Bison early in this match. As the Aggies get the ball over to Powell. Three-point shot by Powell. Adrian Powell. And this has been a phenomenal season for Adrian Powell. Uh, he has scored his career high 29 points in the first Biak uh, contest against North Carolina Central as the Aggies fell short to the um, historic rival, North Carolina Central Eagles. Great move by Dickerson. Shot is no good. And it's controlled by Lamont Middleton. Here comes the Aggies running in the hands of Gene Louisme. Cross court to Austin Witter. Strong move by Witter. And they like a deflection, but the officials said the ball goes back to the Bison. 
For that time, would have thought he saw um, Beckford wide open, tried to get it to him, just a little hot on that pass. In that situation, you would like to see Wilder just get go strong to the basket, and uh, great unselfish play. But there's sometimes you got to just be a little bit selfish, and a great move baseline cut by Dickerson. So now it's a 10-8 lead. The Aggies still hold on to a two-point lead. 13-27 remaining as Middleton is trapped. Great hands by Frazier. A jump ball possession. Go, let the ball goes back to the Bison. Substitution in for North Carolina ENT, number four. And number three, Demetrius Upchurch, number four. And number three, Jeremy of Underwood replaces number five, Gene Louisme. And number 34, Bruce Beckford. Just had a chance to take a look at Coach Nickelberry of, of Howard. And uh, he's done a fabulous job since coming to Howard. Good defense that time. The Aggie basketball. And it's off the foot of Frazier, so... Great defense early in the game by Jeremy Underwood as the ball goes back to the Aggies. And you were saying about Coach Nickelberry, the uh, great job he's done at Howard in his third season. The Aggies still hold on to a 10-8 lead. As the ball's in the hands of LeBont Middleton. So far, one of the leading scorers for the Aggies this season. As they get the ball into Upchurch. Now, pump fake by Adrian Powell. Three-point shot by Powell. Powell. And Adrian Powell is just doing what Adrian Powell does. Just scores from the perimeter. Does whatever it needs for the Aggies this season. And Adrian Powell, stroke is just getting sweeter and sweeter as his confidence grows. And, I mean, he's, he's stroking the three-pointer as well as I've seen him do it in his entire career. And Nicholson, great pass over for a call. Three-point shot is no good. Rebounded by Jeremy Underwood. And the Aggies are more executing the, the basketball this season, being able to show patience under Coach Alexander's uh, tutelage. Well, I think he's done a good job setting the tone for what he wanted. Adrian Powell, three-point basket is good. you got to say that was a gut check by Adrian Powell coming around the screen. <laughs> And that's three quick threes by the senior out of Con over North Carolina. So well, he has 11 points already in the ball game. We're not, we're not even eight minutes in. If this is an over what we have, we might be seeing a, a LeBron James or Dwayne Wade type night, uh, Terry. Well, you never know. You might actually see uh, Kevin Durant. <laughs> As Adrian Powell's at the line to complete a four-point play. And you can definitely say he's already heated up. <laughs> so that's uh, 12 quick points for uh, Adrian Powell. 17-8 lead for the hometown Aggies. You know, I got over here a little early today uh, to prepare for the game, and I saw Adrian Powell out on the court very early shooting around. Good jump shot that time by Trey Lee uh, from Howard to give, cut the lead to six. But... Adrian Powell started out very early this morning, getting out here, <laughs> taking some shots, finding his spot on the court, and thus far it's paid off for him. Well, that's what true shooters and true scorers should do. You know, it's a mental preparation for a game, but also to make sure that you uh, got your rhythm early in the game as Lamont Middleton pump fake, mid-range shot by Middleton. And those are the two players that Howard definitely does not want to get hot for the Aggies. Well, it's going to be a long night for the Bison. Middleton with a good up fake that time. Up fake and go. Got the little 18-foot jumper, and he just drained it. And he didn't he didn't get the normal double team he gets because they're so worried about Powell on the outside, Terry. Well, they have to be definitely worried about Powell as Powell already has 12 quick points with 11 minutes remaining in the first half. But they can't take their eye off a, a prolific score like Middleton as Trey Lee penetrates. And it's an elevized pass. And the ball goes back to ANT as we're at our second official timeout. 10 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the first half. The Aggies have an eight-point lead, 19-11 over the Bison. And we'll be back shortly.
19-11. The Aggies have an eight-point lead over the visiting Howard Bison. I'm Terry Cooper here with Walter Johnson. And so far, Walter, we've seen a scoring extravaganza by uh, the North Carolina a and early. Started off with number 34, the freshman Bruce Beckford, and he just passed the baton over to his teammate, Adrian Powell, who's leading all scores with 12 quick points in the first half. a and as a team, is shooting extremely well and great passing inside. And you know what? I like that. I like that attacking the rim by the a and And it puts number four, Demetrius Upchurch, at the line shooting two. As it was a great uh, unselfish play by the Aggies as they got it in the middle to Austin Wooder and a cutting Demetrius Upchurch to the basket. Uh, and put Upchurch to sing out of Raleigh, North Carolina to the line shooting two. This is the first as substitution comes in the game. Louise May and Bruce Beckford returns in the game, substituting in for Austin Wooder and Lamont Middleton. So Upchurch has a, uh, a second free throw attempt. Rims in, rims out. Uh, rebound by Dickerson. Dickerson almost tipped that thing in. Uh. <laughs> Ante playing just tenacious defense. Good defense out there by Jeremy Underwood. And it got Frazier a little bit frustrated because uh, there was no movement by his teammates. They get the ball inside to Leary. Back out to Dickinson. Three-point shot by Dickinson. Rims in. No good. Rebounded by Adrian Powell. Nag is showing a lot of patience. They're trying to execute the offense. Adrian Powell, another three-point shot. Adrian wow. Powell. <laughs> we want to see in the shoes. Adrian Powell is on fire. That yeah. number five shooting four and four from three-point range. That's 15 points early for Adrian Powell. This time he shot a tough shot over the center, Leary, but he shot it with no conscience and hit the bottom of the net. 22-11, Aggies 11-point lead, nine minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Strong move by Frazier, Floaters gets the friendly roll for Frazier. 22-13. Simeon Frazier, 5'11 sophomore out of Norfolk, Virginia. Good swing pass that time. Louise me thought about it. Pulls up. Mid-range, no good. Rebounded by beautiful, beautiful. And a tough <laughs> shot by a tough basket by Demetrius Upchurch. And that was a good rebound and a good finish that time by the senior from Raleigh. So we're starting to see the Aggies move the ball around and continue to play great defense as Adrian Powell got his hands in on another deflection almost by the Aggies. Strong move by Lee. It's a foul. This time the foul will be on Jeremy Underwood with a hold. This is his first foul. The second. Correction, the second team foul. A correction, the third team foul for the Aggies. As the Bison still have possession. 24-13. The Aggies have a comfortable lead thanks by the scorching shooting of Adrian Powell in the first half. Right now, 15 points early for the senior. They get it inside, they get it back out, and it's a three-second violation. This time it's a three-second violation off for Yomo. So these unforced turnovers by the Bison is really starting to penalize them a little bit as the Aggies have a chance to increase on their lead. Right now, Adrian Powell, another three, is way off. A strong rebound, it's gonna be a jump ball possession. Ball. The ball stays with the Aggies. Well, Adrian Powell finally missed. <laughs> I know Howard's thinking, oh, my God, thank you. You know, finally. <laughs> well, it actually wouldn't have been a miss because it didn't hit the rim. If someone would have caught it and put it in, we would have counted it as an assist. So another substitution in for the Bison as Okoro comes back into the lineup. Baseline, another baseline pass for the Aggies, and that will send Demetrius Upchurch to the line again. Shooting two free throws. I'll tell you what I'm liking. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Demetrius Upchurch attacking the rim, not settling for the little soft shot or the pump fake. He's attacking in front of the basket, and he's getting rewarded for it in the, in the way of uh, free throws. And he connects on the first free throw. 
increasing the lead 25-13. So the Aggies have come out uh, offensively strong with the help of uh, early, as we can say, Bruce Beckford and the scorching shooting of uh, Adrian Powell as Upchurch misses the second free throw. Comfortable 12-point lead. Plenty of time in this game as Trey Lee, long three-point shot is no good. A strong rebound by Upchurch. Upchurch is doing a, a great job on the boards, both offensively and defensively for the Aggies. Mid-range three-point shot, count as a three for Jeremy Underwood. Everyone seems to be getting in their rhythm as the Aggies increase that lead to 15 early. So the Howard Bison have to be able to uh, respond immediately before this game gets out of hand. Yeah, and it's it's right there on the fringes, uh, Terry, you know, of, of getting out of hand. If Howard can't get something going and Antti keeps up this scorching shooting, it's going to be very tough on the Bison. And the Bison stay in the matchup zone. They finally get over to Trey Lee. Strong move by Lee. No call. Lee goes under. No good. Tip in, no good. Rebounded by Bruce Beckford. And here comes the Aggies. Put it in the hands of Jeremy Underwood. As Underwood steps in to the shot. Three-point shot is no good. Strong rebound by Adrian Powell. Left hand no good. And a finish wow. by Demetrius Upchurch. I tell you what, somebody has uh, given Demetrius Upchurch a shot in the arm because he is playing like a man possessed. Well, that causes Coach Nickelberry to call a quick 30-second timeout. Six minutes, 57 seconds remaining in the first half. The Aggies have a 30-13 to lead, and it's all about great team play, unselfishness by the Aggies. So we're just, I, I'm liking, like I said, I told you earlier, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Demetrius Upchurch, and that's going to the rim with a lot of force and a lot of determination, saying, listen, nobody's going to stop me today. And, and Howard is one of these teams that's not extremely large, you know, like we played, they, and they played some big teams so far this year. So our bigs are starting to say, hey, maybe I am a big man. Maybe the stuff that coach is talking to me about in practice will pay off and will come to fruition if we just keep on working. Well, we see that a lot of players, seniors, have uh, accepted their roles as Upchurch started off early as a starter, but it seems that he's more productive coming off the bench. And that was one of the things that's tough for a senior in his uh, final year, but it seems that he bought into Coach Alexander's philosophy, seeing that he's more productive coming in off the bench to be able to see the game and be able to take advantage that way. So we're seeing uh, great things come out of Upchurch. Uh, especially this game. And the Aggies continue with the pressure. And they're running a scramble type defense, running people at the ball. A Coral's mid, uh, mid range is no good. Another rebound by the Aggies. And as Underwood patiently sets things up for the Aggies. Now it's the Bison that set a Matchup zone, tough pass by Luis Me, and uh, taken by Trey. So here comes uh, the Bison, have a chance to score. Trey Lee gets it to Frazier, strong move by Frazier, three point shot by Lee is short and falls in the hands of Bruce Beckford. And Coach Alexander is telling uh, his playmaker to be patient and go execute the offense as they have a chance to increase on their lead. Right now, the Aggies are ahead, 30 to 13. Five minutes, 51 seconds remaining. Mid-range shot by Upchurch is short. Rebounded by Frazier. As Frazier runs the break for the Bison, bounce pass to Leary, and a foul. This foul will be on Demetrius Upchurch. And that will send Leary to the line for the Bison, shooting two. And we're at a media timeout. Five minutes, 43 seconds remaining. The Aggies 30, the Howard Bison 13. And we'll be back here at www.ncantaggies.com. Style points don't show up in the box score. Talking a good game has never won a championship. And we're sorry to break it to you. It's not the shoes. It's the work, the pride, the blood, and the tears. Because Russell's wicking sweat out of the equation. Russell dry power moisture wicking tees and fleece. The next evolution in over 100 years of raw performance.
We're back here at Corbin Sports Center, 30 to 13. The Aggies have a comfortable lead over the visiting Bison of Howard University. I'm Terry Cooper here with Walter Johnson. Walter, there's nothing else you can say about the Aggies' unselfish play and executing in the first half early as they have came out scorching great with the first 15 points, uh, actually 17 points in the first half by Adrian Powell. Yeah, Adrian Powell has just played uh, extremely well. You can't say enough about him tonight. He's, he's played, you know, unselfish basketball, but he's picked his team up when he needed to. And you got to like the play of Bruce Beckford, um, the defensive intensity of Jeremy Underwood and uh, and Austin Witter. And then and, and Middleton has been very smart tonight. He hadn't forced anything, kind of allowing it to come to him. And if he does that, he'll be able to get his average before the night's over with as well. Well, what we like to see is uh, – continuous great play by the Aggies as Alfonso Leary is at the line for Howard shooting two free throws to try to cut into this uh, lead of the Aggies. First free throw is long by Leary. He misses the second and a strong rebound once again by Bruce Beckford. Beckford with another rebound. He's done a great job hitting the boards. He and Upchurch and uh, Austin Witter. Witter now with the ball in the mid post. The Aggies are moving the ball pretty smooth. They get the ball in the hands of Middleton. Now Middleton, Gene Louise me thought about the shot. He gets it on three-point shot for Middleton. It's short. And a tough uh, rebound by Leary. He gets in the ball in the hands of Frazier. Strong move by Frazier up the pass, and it's traveling by Lee. The strong closeout defense that time by Jeremy Underwood caused that travel because he, he thought about shooting it, and Jeremy Underwood ran out on him real quick. Well, that's then great. He, then he tried to get around him and didn't put the ball down. And that is great defense by Underwood. And as a shooter, you should go ahead after a couple of passes. You got to go ahead and be determined to go ahead and take that shot no matter where it's located. Aggie still 30 to 13. The Aggies are still ahead. A comfortable lead. Four minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the first half. And ANT is moving the ball smoothly. Has a strong move by Jeremy Underwood. Strong penetration. Blocked by a coral. Recovered by Gene Louisme. Tough shot by Louisme off the glass and score it. Count the one hand runner by Gene Louise, man. Just a beautiful touch on that shot that time, Terry. And ANT didn't give up on that uh, play as Underwood was blocked by a coral. And Louise May was able to get a nice uh, kiss off the glass, increasing the lead to 19, 32 to 13. Four minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the first half, and it's been all ANT the first half. Now Dickerson stops the dribble, gets the ball back out to Frazier. Only four seconds on the shot clock. Strong move by Frazier, and the ball is deflected by Witter. And here comes Gene Louise May as he. Gets the ball back in the hands of Jeremy Underwood. And the Aggies are moving the balls patiently. Trying to find the best shot, which is great for Coach Alexander's squad in his first season at the helm for North Carolina A&T. And Howard kind of packed back in his own daring A&T to shoot some more threes, but they A&T has gotten smart. Beautiful pass that time over to Louise May from Beckford. No good and uh, deflected and recovered by the Bison. And Louise May really should have finished that, but good steal by Austin Witter. And Witter is called for a travel as he was coming out of the spin. And we're now at another media timeout. Three minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the first half. ANT 19 ahead, 32 13 over the Howard Bison. And we'll be back shortly at the Triad Entertainment Network. The 2012-13 basketball season is underway, and the North Carolina Anti-Athletics Department has a way for you to capture most of the games, even if you don't live in the Greensboro area. The Aggie live stream returns for a third season on NCATAggies.com. 10 Web TV will stream 10 women's games and 10 men's games this season, including all eight MEAC doubleheaders. Simply go to www.NCATAggies.com for all game times, and then log onto the site at the game time and enjoy all the action. Finally, tell a friend about this program.
the more eyes who watch, the more we can grow the web stream initiative. So get locked in. TV and Web TV. At game time. Thirty-two to thirteen here at the musical and loud Corbett Sports Center here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm Terry Cooper here with Walter Johnson. Walter, thirty-two thirteen. The Aggies have been on a really a great scoring tear this first half, as they seem to not make too many errors, but they've been capitalizing well on the scoring end as well as being able to cause havoc to the Howard University Bison. As we're back on with continuous play, the ball is, uh, after a turnover by Austin Witter, the ball is back to the Bison. Howard University, they get it inside to Okoro. He, he had to have traveled that time, but. And almost a strip, but it's recovered by Bruce Beckford. And again, in this ball game, they're allowing the guys to play a little bit, allowing them to be a little physical. You have to understand, it's MEAC time, and when it's the conference time, everything is going to uh, ante up as a quick shot in the corner by Louise Me. It's no good. The rebound was battled, but it goes back to the Bison. So the Bison are down 19 early in this half, and uh, I know Coach Nickelberry is showing a little bit of concern that he has to see something happen for his uh, Bison club as Dixon takes a three-point shot, no good. And the ball goes to the Aggies as Adrian Powell, leading all scorers with 15 points in the first half, is back in the game for the Aggies. Two minutes, 25 seconds and counting remaining in the first half. And T with a commanding 19-point lead. But I'm sure Coach Alexander wants to see two or three more good possessions out of the Aggies to maybe increase this lead. Beautiful movement. Great ball, unselfish. Did not get the ball in the hands of Powell. Powell goes back out to Louise May. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. They get it back in the hands of Powell. Long three by Powell. And he's fouled. And so he's fouled. He'll to shoot three. I tell you what, that's twice tonight we've seen that. Matter of fact, three times. Amber Calvin was fouled on a three earlier in the women's game. And now twice uh, Powell has been fouled on three-point shots. And I know Coach Nickelberry is really on the official about that play, but you have to get on your uh, player, Trey Lee. Why would you actually, although Adrian Powell has been shooting very unconsciously in the first half, why would you foul a guy with the shot clock going down that far away from the basket? He knocks down the first. He knocks down a pair. We'll see if he can make the trifecta happen, uh, Terry. Well, he's so far he's uh, connected on those first two free throws, increasing his uh, point average so far tonight to 17. He has a chance to uh, increase the lead of the Aggies as he connects on all three, 35-13. Now the Aggies are ahead by 22 points as is a timeout by Coach Alexander. He's going to do a quick 30-second timeout. And Coach Nickelberry is really on the official about that previous foul play. But they always say when a shot goes up, you have to really know where that player is actually shooting the ball from to avoid uh, a situation that just taken place. And now the Aggies have increased their lead. Uh, they're ahead by 22 early in this match. It's almost as if the game is almost out of reach by Howard, even though there's a second half definitely to show up uh, after the first. Well, right now, if you just want to look at it, it's Adrian Powell, 18, Howard University, 13. <laughs> and we're not playing as an individual. We're playing as a team. So A&T as a team as well is, is uh, contributing. Every man out there is contributing something. And they've built a commanding 22-point lead with 155 remaining in the half. Well, they always say this game is a game of streaks. So we're hoping that Howard needs to find their streak pretty fast. Trey Lee gets it in to Boyomo. Mid-range shot by Boyomo is no good. Rebounded by Austin Witter. And Aggies now are playing extremely patient in this first half. Have a comfortable and commanding 22-point lead in the final 1 minute 29 seconds remaining before halftime. Now Howard has extended their matchup zone. 
That was only 12 seconds on the shot clock. They get a mid-range inside. Great unselfish play. Adrian Powell, another three-point shot. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, he's got to be looking around because he, he's unconscious right about now, uh, uh, Terry, he must be thinking, wow, this is a nice dream. I never want to wake up, but folks, it's real. <laughs> he has 21 points in the first half. And it's been uh, almost literally unconscious from three-point shooting. Strong move by Nickerson, gets it into Leary. Strong post move by Leary, back over to Nickerson. Dickerson. Dickerson gets into Bayamo. Great block, great hands by Bayamo. Bayamo shot misses, and we have a foul. It's time to foul. There's a hold on Austin Witter. So the ball remains with the Bison. 41 seconds remaining. Correction, 30 on Lamont Middleton, his first. So the ball stays with the Bison. So 40 seconds remaining in the half. a t up 25, 38 to 13. And they got away with a walk again. These guys just cuffing the ball and, and taking three steps with it. But an errant pass. It'll be Aggie basketball with 35.2 remaining. Well, so a t get, should get the last shot. Of the half. We wonder if they'll go to their hot man. <laughs> Round number 22, Brandon Ford comes in the game replacing Nickerson. As the Aggies have the final shot of the game. So we're going to see if Coach Alexander is going to make sure his troops stay patient for this final shot to increase their lead. Right now they're ahead by 25. And very much in control. Howard spreading the zone. This is an opportunity for Middleton to take somebody off the dribble and get into the middle. And they're going to pick and roll between Middleton. They get it over to Witter. Witter finds Adrian Powell. Adrian Powell gets Witter in the corner. Three-point shot by Witter. It's short. Tipped in. Almost tipped in by Adrian Powell. Rebounded by Louise Me. It's and it's halftime as the Aggies have a couple 25-point lead. 38-13 to 13 over the Bison. As we go to halftime, We'll be back shortly with the halftime statistics. Check out Anti Aggie Basketball on Saturday, January 26th against the Morgan State Bears. North Carolina Anti's women play at 2 p.m., the men play at 4 p.m. That's North Carolina Anti taking on Morgan State at Corbett Sports Center Saturday, January 26th. Tip off 2 p.m. Don't miss the action. NCATAggies.com. Style points don't show up in the box score. Talking a good game has never won a championship. And we're sorry to break it to you. It's not the shoes. It's the work, the pride, the blood, and the tears. Because Russell's wicking sweat out of the equation. Russell dry power moisture wicking tees and fleece. The next evolution in over 100 years of raw performance.
Welcome back to the Halftime Report at Halftime. It's North Carolina A&T State University 38, Iowa 13. For North Carolina A&T, they're 13 for 28 shooting. The first half for 46.4%. They're also 6 out of 13 shooting from three-point range, Jay. And uh, for 46.2%. From the free throw line, they're 6 of 9 for 66.7%. Howard, on the other hand, is... Uh, only six of 24. Well, what's bothering um, the Howard Bison is that they're not having enough. They're being a little bit more too patient when it comes on offense, but that's only by the uh, defense of the Aggies as the Aggies have spread their defense and great help by teammates in order for the, uh, the Bison to take tough shots in this game. On the other hand, for the Aggies, they had scorching three-point shooting by Adrian Powell, who's leading all scores, and uh, even the Bison <laughs> with 21 points to lead all scores. And it's just been, uh, so far, the Adrian Powell show, as well as there's been great scoring from Bruce Beckford, Demetrius Upchurch, both have five, and a couple of points from G. Louise Mayer, Lamont Middleton, and a three-pointer by Jeremy Underwood. So in the second half, the Bison and Coach Nickelberry's team has to be able to find something in order to get back in this game trailing by 25. Trailing 25 and also getting out rebounded by North Carolina a and um, 24 to 12. Uh, a and has eight offensive rebounds to um, Howard three offensive rebounds so a and just playing better all the way around the board Terry. Well great shooting percentage uh, 47 percent from the field 46% from three, and although they're shooting 60, only 66% from the free throw line, um, there's nothing really wrong that the Aggies can do. I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they've reached one goal uh, by Coach Alexander, only having seven turnovers in the first half as we're getting ready to start the second half. Court pressure there, uh, extended pressure on the Bison. Great move by Phillips into traffic, and Phillips puts the Bison on the board. 38-15. And they missed Mike Phillips a lot in the in the first half. Terry, he got uh, in early foul trouble and had to sit for most of the half. And Howard labored without him in the game. And a. Almost a great pass, deflected by Phillips. Phillips gets the rebound, and here comes the Bison. Bison get it over to Frazier, and Frazier patiently gets it a three-point shot by Lee. No good, rebounded by Coral. Coral in traffic, gets it back out to Frazier. Frazier penetrates into the gap, gets it over to a Coral. Coral to Phillips, mid-range shot by Phillips. No good, and deflected off, and it stays with the Bison. So we see the difference that with Phillips being in the game, how you can see that the Bison are actually trying to um, get themselves back together as there's a quick timeout. This time it's a quick timeout by Coach Alexander, a 30-second timeout to get his troops back together. Well, he's, he's a little upset with the lack of uh, defensive rebounding. We talked about right at the onset of the second half, the advantage that ANT had in rebounding. And then right here, in the uh, first half, I mean, the first minutes of the of the second half, we kind of give it away. We give that advantage away by not boxing out, not going to the board strong. Well, we see that Coach uh, Alexander has put into a full timeout to get everything together with his players because these guys have worked hard to have a controlling 38-15 lead, and he don't want that to blow. Of course, basketball is a game of streaks, and not to give any momentum to Howard at this moment. If they have a comfortable lead like this, you, it's the time that the team needs to go ahead and put them out of their misery early and uh, leave something on the Bison's head for the next time they have to play them. So we're about to resume play here at Corbett Sports Center as the ball stays with the Bison of Howard University. We have the starting lineups. Uh, the lineups in the second half is Lee for the Bison. Lee Leary, Phillips, Frazier, Anna Coral. For the Aggies, Middleton, Louise Me, 
Beckford, Powell, and the man in the middle, Austin Witter, number 31. Frazier with a three-point shot in the corner, and it's good, and that's five quick points for the Bison in the, early in the second half. So now we're starting to see um, what the Bison can do in the second half. Uh, they had five quick points, and now they're starting to pick up the defensive intensity. And the ball's in the hands of Adrian Powell, who led all scores with 21 first-half points. Now Beckford with a mid-range shot. Shot is short. And the ball goes over to the Bison. So three, three empty possessions early for the Aggies. And each one of the possessions for the Bison have been productive, positive possessions. And now trying to just steal a few more seconds by not inbounding it or not picking up the inbounds quickly. Well, now the lead of the Aggies is 20 points, 38-18. As Frazier with another three-point shot is long. Rebounded by Witter. And the ball is off of Witter's foot. And the ball goes back to the Bison. So Howard has a chance to cut more into this 20-point lead of North Carolina A&T. Phillips thought about the shot, gets it into Frazier. Frazier read by Gene Louisman. Here comes the Aggies. Widow over to Beckford. And Beckford draws the foul. This foul will be on uh, Bison's number three, Okoro. So that will put Bruce Beckford back at the line, shooting two. Bruce Beckford at the line for A&T. Freshman Beckford out of Montrose Christian Academy. Out of Silver Spring, Maryland. As he hits the first free throw. It's been a sensational season for the freshman out of Maryland. Uh, came into the uh, Aggie program uh, and has been very productive for Coach Alexander in his first season. He misses the second free throw. Aggies are ahead 21. 17 28 remaining in the game. Bison gets the ball in the corner to Lee. Better, better uh, switch defense that time by a and not getting caught up in the picks. That's uh, 10 seconds on the shot clock now. Pick and roll action for Frazier and Phillips. And Phillips actually with what should have been a moving screen. And they get it inside to Leary. Leary misses. And a strong rebound by Beckford. Great rebound that time by Beckford. He just decided it was going to be his ball. Louise me gets away with the travel, gets up, gets fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And that's a foul on Leary. As you said, Louise B gets away with the travel, but he still penetrates strong to the basket. And now he will be at the line. So Gene Louise B, the senior for the Aggies. Gene Louise B knocks down the first for his third points of the ball game. This season we've seen a lot of uh, – contributing scoring by um, all the Aggies. One Aggie can have a great score at night, but it always interchanges with every player throughout the night as Louise Me hits both free throws. 41-18, a comfortable lead for the Aggies early in the second half. And we see a little bit of fight in the visiting Bison of Howard University. Frazier makes a move to the basket, gets it in the hands of Phillips. Strong move by Phillips. It's good closeout defense, though, by A&T, not giving up anything easy and staying right there with the, with the dribbler and the, uh, and the shooter. And now the shot clock is down to three seconds. Uh, it's going to be a tough shot for Lee. Throws it up, no good, and a shot clock violation, and that's great shot team defense by the Aggies. Basketball. So the Aggies have a chance to increase on their lead as it's just been all North Carolina A&T from the beginning against uh, Howard. So Howard has to be able to make something happen and very fast before this game really gets out of hand. And Louise me for a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by Leary. Louise me was uh, politicking for the foul on that one, trying to get three free throws, but not going to have any of that. Howard trying to get it started. Good shot inside. No, not going to be good. 
or miss, excuse me, and it'll be Aggie basketball off the Howard Bison. And we're finally at a media timeout. 15-53 remaining in the game. 41-18. North Carolina ENT over Howard. Well, we'll be back shortly here in the Triad Entertainment Network. The 2012-13 basketball season is underway, and the North Carolina Anti-Athletics Department has a way for you to capture most of the games, even if you don't live in the Greensboro area. The Aggie live stream returns for a third season on NCATAggies.com. Ten Web TV will stream ten women's games and ten men's games this season, including all eight MEAC doubleheaders. Simply go to www.NCATAggies.com for all game times, and then log onto the site at the game time and enjoy all the action. Finally, tell a friend about this program. The more eyes who watch, the more we can grow the web stream initiative. So get locked in and we'll see you at game time. We're back to live action and we get a chance to look at the beautiful Aggie cheerleaders as they're up on the second deck, Terry, right, around, right over your shoulder <laughs> trying to get the fans pumped up. Well, the fans are definitely pumped up here and uh, at North Carolina ENT, as they see the men have a 41-18 lead over the visiting Howard uh, University Bison. And I'm pretty sure the crowd here at Corbett Sports Center is not disappointed within the cheerleaders or the action they've seen so far this afternoon. As play resumes, uh, Aggies have the ball. It's in the hands of Gene Louisme. As he gets the ball in the hands of Adrian Powell. Powell just had an outstanding first half. There's plenty of time on the shot clock for the Aggies. Now Austin Witter, three-point shot by Witter. is missed. Strong rebound by Lee. And Howard playing much better defense this half, extending their defensive pressure out beyond 25 feet. And this is a time you would like to see a little less patience from the Bison as Frazier's floater goes in and out. Strong rebound by Austin Witter. Now, great pass by Witter. Controlled and called for a travel. And that's a great heads-up play by Austin Witter to try to find Bruce Beckford. Well, Austin Witter has done a wonderful job passing all year long. And uh, he, find, he, had, he always keeps his head up as he's dribbling the ball down the floor. And back in the game... Demetrius Upchurch, number four for the Aggies as he replaces Bruce Beckford. And we saw some exciting basketball from the senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina in the first half to give the Aggies a lift. Phillips' mid-range shot is no good. Strong wow. elevated rebound by Adrian Powell. Powell went extremely high that time to pick up that, uh, that rebound, uh, Terry. And Powell is doing everything on all cylinders. Uh, scoring for the Aggies, rebounding. Also, the intangibles as Upchurch inside. Strong move by Upchurch in the basket. Demetrius Strong Upchurch. post move by Upchurch. Upchurch has just decided all of a sudden, I'm not going to be stopped. I'm a, I'm a legit big man in MEAC, and he's playing just like that. And this is a big plus for Coach Alexander and the Aggies to see Upchurch playing in the post. And now we see him on the defensive end as he gets a steal by playing the passing lane. He now to Middleton. He gets it to Louise me in the corner. Louise May almost uh, got away with a little bit, of, but he uh, was able to recover. Now it's in the hands of Upchurch. Upchurch mid-range shot. And that's four quick ones for Demetrius Upchurch. Demetrius Upchurch just got inserted into the game about a minute ago and two straight trips down the floor. He scores buckets for a &T. And on the defensive end, got a valuable steal. Strong move in the basket. And basket's no good. And that will be a foul this time. It's on number 30, Lamont Middleton. That was Lamont Middleton, his second. And that was sin number three, a coral at the line, shooting two for the Bison. Had a chance to just take a look at Cy Alexander, and even though his team is up 27, he's still coaching, still coaching them up, still teaching lessons out there on the court. Coral misses the first free throw, substitution in the game. Number 21, R.J. Buck. And number three, Demet Jeremy Underwood comes in the game replacing Adrian Powell and Lamont Middleton. 
And as you were saying earlier about Coach Alexander, that's what makes Coach Alexander one of the supreme superior coaches in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. He's, uh, he never stops coaching, even if he's ahead by a substantial lead like he, like he is tonight, 45-18. He continues to let these players continue to play, continue to execute, and also play to the fullest as a team. So you, uh, you see that great uh, aspiration in a, a great coach, which leads off to his players. R.J. Buck, strong move for Buck. And it's uh, denied by Leary, and the ball goes back to the Bison. Tell you what, R.J. Buck, you can't fault him for going to the rim strong. He definitely went to the rim with a purpose. Well, R.J. Buck has, you know, been battling injuries this season, you know, a lower back injury. He's uh, playing through, but we like to see a great player, athletic player like R.J. Buck in the game to be able to contribute for a &T. And the Aggies continue to apply the pressure to make every uh, shot attempt for the Bison extremely difficult. Great punt fade for Phillips, fade away for Phillips. No good, strong rebound by Louise Me. Now the Aggies are playing patiently. They have a 45-18 lead. 12 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the game. And it's been all NCANT. They get it inside to Buck. And Buck is fouled. This foul will be on a coral. Yeah. The fourth team foul for the Bison. Substitution of the game. Number one, Lee returns back in the game. Replacing a coral. Good ball movement by the Aggies. That time the pass. Try, try to wrap around pass. They got deflected off of a bison and they come up with the steal. And this is a time that you would really like to see the bison pick up the intensity of trying to score immediately. As it's the turnover and this Got ball, great defense by the Aggies, and the ball goes back to ANT. And uh, for the first time, number 10 for the Aggies, Sean Stewart comes in the game replacing Gene Louisme. Another freshman for Coach Alexander, this freshman out of Monroe, North Carolina. Jeremy Underwood, junior out of Washington, D.C., gets it inside to Demetrius Upchurch. Upchurch a double team. They try to get it back out. Baseline to R.J. Buck, and the ball stays with a &T. That so, time, Howard did a good job trapping on the baseline. That time, as soon as they had a man fronting and uh, playing behind up church, and as soon as he got it, they went on ahead and trapped him down the baseline, almost caused a turnover. Sean, Sean Stewart, Stewart. three-point shot is short, rebounded by Stewart, and he uh, gets the ball back into the hands of Jeremy Underwood. Austin Witter calling for the ball on the block. He had his man posted up. Let's pick and roll action between Underwood. Strong move by Underwood. A scoop shot. And he almost gets the friendly roll. <laughs> I tell you what, that was Harlem Globetrotter-esque right there by Underwood. And it almost fell. And you heard the crowd really, really get pumped up about the thing when he took the shot. So, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Another official timeout, 11.39 remaining in the game. It's North Carolina a t 45, Howard 18. We'll be back after this. Check out Ante Aggie Basketball on Saturday, January 26th against the Morgan State Bears. North Carolina Ante's women play at 2 p.m., the men play at 4 p.m. That's North Carolina Ante taking on Morgan State at Corbett Sports Center Saturday, January 26th. Tip off, 2 p.m. Don't miss the action. NCATAggies.com. Forty-five, eighteen. The Aggies have a comfortable lead over the visiting Howard University Bison. I'm Terry Cooper here with Walter Johnson as we hear the pep band of North Carolina A&T uh, lighting a great, well, uh, capacitated crowd here at Corbett Sports Center today. And they are definitely excited about uh, the great game that the men are actually presenting for the crowd as school has just taken place uh, here at in Greensboro, North Carolina. 
as we have number three, Jeremy Underwood, at the line for the Aggies shooting two. We've seen outstanding play by the Aggies offensively and defensively as they have a chance to increase this lead. And Underwood connects on the first free throw. Jeremy Underwood, junior out of Washington, D.C., uh, started the season in the starting lineup for Coach Alexander, and now it's come to more of a reserve role as he connects on both free throws. And because Coach Alexander has made those adjustments, it seems that the team has uh, propelled in a, an ascending way now in a, as the MEAC season gets in full swing. Good uh, cut to the basket that time by Howard University. Uh, that was uh, Alfonso Leary. Uh, Demetrius Upchurch fouled him, and he'll go to the line with Will Leary to shoot two. But that's the kind of ball movement I'm sure Coach Nickelberry wants to see out of his charges. I'm coach, uh, sure Coach Nickelberry wants to see this, and as well as continue as uh, there's plenty of time in the game. And, you know, with basketball, there's a way that anything can happen at any time. But um, you want to see that the, the Bison actually make this more of a game as Leary misses the second strong rebound by Austin Witter. And now the Bison put on um, a half-court trap as the Aggies get the ball across half-court and back in the hands of their playmaker, Jeremy Underwood. As the Bisons have an extended zone, matchup zone against the Aggies. They still get out of the ball is over, almost almost a turnover and it is a turnover uh, as it deflects off of uh, Upchurch and the ball goes back to the Aggies I mean correction back to the Bison back in the lineup number four Dickerson comes back in the lineup replacing Samuel Frazier and number 22 for the Bison Brandon Ford is in the lineup Good harassing defense out front by Jeremy Underwood. Now Sean Stewart picking up good switch by Sean Stewart, keeping pressure on the ball. And the Aggies are not letting up on the defense on the Bison. As Phillips tries to make a move, shot by Phillips is no good. And it's rebounded by Leary. Gets it back in the hands of Ford, now back in the hands of Phillips. Ford penetrates strong. Tough shot by Ford is no good. But he draws the foul. This foul will be on Upchurch. And that's the third foul on Upchurch. Foul on Demetrius Upchurch is third. Third team. So that will put Brandon Ford at the line for the first time in the game, shooting two. Brandon Ford at the line for Howard University. He'll shoot two. Ford misses the first one. Ford, the 22 Brandon Ford, a 6'3 sophomore out of Largo, Maryland, via through uh, Gwynn Park High School. And for the first time, we're about to see in the game for the Aggies, as Ford hits the second free throw, number 33, Waylon Silverin, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, comes in the game replacing Demetrius Upchurch, who was, came in with a great game and, I mean, been a great impact for the Aggies in the first half. Got a chance to see the Aggie dog right there. Uh, Pumping the crowd up, staying, keeping keeping everybody into it here. <laughs> Terry, and that, that Aggie dog has been around since you played. Yes, it's, it's great to see our mascot come out and uh, enlighten the crowd as well as uh, us as commentators, as well as the players, to come out here and continuously uh, bring that upliftment of Aggie pride here at North Carolina ENT. The ball stays with the Aggies. Antti getting a little careless with the basketball. As they're setting things up, it will be Aggie basketball. Only 12 seconds on the shot clock. As Stewart gets the ball in to Underwood. And the Aggies have to attack quickly as they get it over to Buck. Now it's five seconds on the shot clock. Get it over to Austin Witter. A deflection. Witter recovers. Tough three-point shot by Witter is short. Hits the rim, but rebounded by Phillips. And here comes the Bison. Gets it over to Dickerson. Brandon Ford, strong penetration. Strong penetration now by Lee. Gets it over to Leary. Strong move inside by Leary. And Leary draws the foul. And this foul will be on Austin Witter. 
It's two shots. Now, all of a sudden, in the second half, correction, R.J. Buck, his first foul, fourth team foul for the Aggies. And as you said earlier, you saw the Aggies playing a little bit uh, careless right now in the second half, and you don't want that to actually uh, come back and uh, be a major affection to affect the Aggies uh, in this game. As the Bison are preparing to make a couple of substitute, well, one substitution as Leary hits the free throw. Uh, number 25 for the Bison. Theodore Boyomo comes back in the game, replacing Leary. And now the Bison comes in with full court press. Stewart has no problem breaking it, gets it over to Underwood. Bump fake by Underwood is deflection. And it's a, a foul, this time to be on number four of the Bison, Dickerson. It's a 16 foul for the Bison. Now Coach Nickelberry comes back in with Frazier. And number three, Okoro replacing Lee and Brandon Ford, number 22. They get it inside to Witter. Shot is no good. Rebounded by Phillips. Bison pushed the ball up the court pretty fast. Gets the ball back over to Phillips. Now it's in the hands of Dickerson. Dickerson goes baseline. Strong move. No good. Rebounded by Witter. And Witter again doing a good job. Strong on the boards. Dribble penetration. Finds the open man. Good pass that time. Shot blocked. Waylon Silverand tried to make a move at the bucket. Now Dickerson thought about it. Strong move. Gets back out to Frazier. Strong penetration by Frazier. I'll tell you what, this is just good defense by the Aggies. They're Strong. contesting every shot, getting in, getting in front of the uh, the dribbler for uh, Howard, and they're just playing excellent team defense all the way around the board. And it shows Howard only has 22 points and over 30 minutes of basketball. And that's one thing that we're seeing this season in the Aggies playing tenacious defense. And Stewart with a three-point shot is way off. And rebounded by Coral and a quick pass for Frazier up to Dickerson. Shot is no good. Rebounded by Underwood. And here comes the Aggies. No look pass over to Witter. Great pass by Jeremy Underwood. A great no look pass. And that's the way to finish by Austin Witter. I mean, he's had a tough night shooting the basketball, but he did exactly what he was supposed to do on that one, Terry. And that's flush it on home. Well, that's great recognition by Underwood to find Witter, who's been. Uh, Battling the boards for the Aggies and deflected shots is Dickerson's shot is no good. The second shot is counted for Dickerson, and uh, that's uh, one of the rare baskets for the Bison tonight as the Bison has 24 points. And we have a substitution in the game. Correction, a media timeout. Seven minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the game. The Aggies are ahead 49-24. to 24 over the Howard Bison, and we'll be back shortly here at the Triad Entertainment Network. Style points don't show up in the box score. Talking a good game has never won a championship. And we're sorry to break it to you. It's not the shoes. It's the work, the pride, the blood, and the tears. Because Russell's wicked sweat out of the equation. Russell Dry Power Moisture Wicking Tees and Fleece. The next evolution in over 100 years of raw performance. Welcome back to North Carolina Anti State University's Corbett Sports Center. I'd like to say a special hello to the Raising Sons Mentoring Program and Miss Lofton for tuning in and watching us here on NCATAggies.com. And play resumes here at uh, Corbett Sports Center. Aggies 49. The visiting Howard University Bison, 24, 7 minutes, 39 seconds remaining. Three-point shot by Jeremy Underwood. Jeremy. <laughs> Tell you what, that was a deep three-pointer. He was about at the at the, uh, the hash mark over there, what used to be called the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> a great penetration by Samuel Frazier. But it's been all North Carolina a and this entire game. Great defense. Um, executing on offense, unselfish play by the Aggies. Had Beckford open for a minute. Uh, Louisa didn't, didn't see him. Adrian Powell, first shot of the second half, goes in and out. I thought he was uh, back on the heat check, uh, Terry. Well, in that situation, you would have. Uh, the Howard Bison are actually focusing on 
the three-point shooting of Adrian Powell. This is a time when an offensive player, as we see Jeremy Underwood doing a few uh, push-ups <laughs> at the end of the foul, a time that when you have to see when a, a defense is focusing on your three-point shooting, that's when you give them a good head fake, cross, and take the mid-range shot to make them have to respect you in all aspects of the game. So Howard will inbound the ball under their basket. Six minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the game. Uh, A&T is ahead by 26. It's mostly been North Carolina A&T as they held the Bison so far to only 26 points um, so far in this game. Phillip Strong moved to the basket and as a blocking foul. And this foul will be again on Jeremy Underwood, which is his third foul. And the take to the line number 13, Phillips, shooting two for the Bison. You know, the A&T can keep this pace up. Uh, just last week uh, on Monday night, they were able to, to have kind of a defensive milestone to held Florida and them to only 40. The way things are going right now, if they can continue to play at this pace and, and hold it out, they'll hold the Bison to under 40, which would be a, a huge, huge statement for their team to make. And these are the type of goals as a coach and a coaching staff that uh, the players have to be able to strive for. Set these kind of defensive goals. When they play Florida a &M, they held them to 40 points. Now in a game like this, maybe they can have another goal. Let's see if we can match it or beat that goal by holding Howard to under 40. And now we're at a timeout, 52-26. Uh, the Aggies has been all North Carolina a and and we'll be back. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. Check out Aggie Swimming as the ladies of North Carolina a t play host to Campbell University Fighting Campbells. All the swimming action is Friday, January 25th. It starts at 5 p.m. from the Aggie Pool. Check out the swim team and support the Aggies. Watch at NCATAggies.com. And we're back here at Corbett Sports Center. And it's been North Carolina a t from the beginning of the game. Now they have a comfortable 26-point lead over the Howard University Bison. At the line for the Bison, number 13, Mike Phillips. Phillips did have uh, problems at the, uh, in the game, uh, picking up two quick fouls for the Bison. They had to sit out most of the second half, and which allowed uh, the great shooting uh, by Adrian Powell and it's just been all a and from that point on. Seventeen seconds on the shot clock. It's plenty of time as Jeremy Underwood sets things up for the Aggies. Gets in the corner, Gene Louisme. Got to get inside to Adrian Powell, and Powell draws a foul. It will be on Leary. So now the Aggies, for the remainder of the game, is in the bonus. Fourth foul on Leary. Yeah, fourth foul on Leary, and uh, Howard suffering some foul trouble. They have two guys with four fouls right now. Powell at the line with a chance to score for the first time in the second half. He has 21 on the game. And this is the first. Rebounded oh, by the Lee. Front end, yeah. <laughs> Well, the Bison are continuously playing to try to cut into this deficit, as that is a travel by Frazier, double dribble. Back in the game, number 31, Austin Witter, as he replaces R.J. Buck. But again, that, that was caused by good defense. He thought he was going to have a shot situation. Right as he pulled up, the man stepped right in his space, right between him, hands up, and the shot opportunity went down the drain. Ante very smartly pulling the ball out, taking time off the clock. 
and moving the ball very well as get it off the Gene Louise me pump fake by Gene Louise me three point shot no good tipped out by Weta and the ball goes to the Bison so the Bison have a chance to cut into this 25 point lead correction 24 point lead correction 25 point lead <laughs> And they do. Jump shot was good by Prince Okoro. So now they're down. They've cut the lead to 23. Beautiful pass inside. Great move by Bruce Beckford. He misses the basket, but that is the fifth foul on Leary. Correction, the foul is on Mike Phillips, his third foul. So that puts Bruce Beckford at the line for two free throws. Bruce Beckford at the line for Beckford knocks down the first with a smooth stroke from the line. This is sixth point of the ball game. Actually, seventh point of the ball game, excuse me. And Beckford has been very solid uh, this season for the Aggies, and he continues that solid play for Coach Alexander as he misses the second. Rebounded by Trey Lee. So if the Bison are going to make a move, they have to make it now because time is not on their side uh, for the remainder of this game as it's been mostly North Carolina A&T as they have a comfortable 53-29 lead. They get in the corner to Trey Lee, and there's nothing much more you can say about the Aggies tenacious defense in this game. Three-point shot by Lee. No good. Rebounded by Beckford. And they advance the ball, get the ball into the hands of Powell. Beckford now with eight rebounds on the game. Gene Louise me a three-point shot in the corner. No good. Rebounded by Leary. Get the ball in the hands of Frazier. Now to get the ball, mid-range shot by Phillips. No good. Strong rebound by Leary. And Leary draws four, contact, and that is the fourth foul. foul. On, uh, <clears throat> on Jeremy Underwood. Oh, Jeremy Underwood. And Coach Alexander decides to keep him into the game. Four minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Yeah, the Aggies continue to play defense and execute on offense very well. It seems that they're going to go ahead and get another victory in the Mid-East Athletic Conference. At the line, number 32, Leary for the Bison. Leary knocks down the first that time. A very good stroke for the big man. Cuts the lead to 23. 53-30 with 4-13 remaining in the game. Now 53-31. And the Bison continue to apply some full court pressure to try to stall the Aggies. And Jeremy Underwood tries to go through traffic. And great defensive play by the Bison. Find Frazier, three-point shot by Lee. Rims in and out, rebounded by Phillips. Strong move by Phillips. And once again, the Bison draws a foul. And this time, this foul will be on Adrian Powell. That's the 18th foul for the Aggies that we're at our official timeout. Three minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the game. ANT up 53-31 over the visiting Bison. And we'll be back to the conclusion of the game. Check out Auntie Aggie Basketball on Saturday, January 26th against the Morgan State Bears. North Carolina Auntie's women play at 2 p.m., the men play at 4 p.m. That's North Carolina Auntie taking on Morgan State at Corbett Sports Center Saturday, January 26th. Tip off 2 p.m. Don't miss the action. NCATAggies.com. Back here at Corbett Sports Center in Greensboro, North Carolina. And it's been North Carolina a &T all the way ahead, 53-31. As you see, most of the crowd heading for the, uh, the exits as they've seen a fabulous game here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, the first home 
MIAC Conference game for the Aggies as they came out and performed very well. Correction, second game at home. But the first one of the new year for the Aggies. So at the line for the Bison, number 13, Mike Phillips. At the line shooting two. You know, I'm sure this is not what Coach Alexander wants to see right now, giving Howard, even though the game is pretty much out of reach, giving Howard a chance to score while the clock is not moving. And that's how Phillips just off the mark. Off the mark, and as you said uh, earlier about Coach Alexander, and as we spoke of earlier, Walter, is that uh, as a team, defensive-wise, they should use these as personal goals or team goals for themselves as Phillips hits the second free throw to see if they, in this final three minutes and 49 seconds in the game, can they hold Howard down as there's a great defensive steal and a dunk by Mike Phillips. As Coach Alexander calls a quick 30-second timeout, um, as it seems that the guys are getting a little bit uh, careless with the basketball, and it calls into a turnover by the Aggies and a uh, dunk by Mike Phillips. You know, but the pressure now kind of makes you wonder where was this pressure in the first half and why didn't Howard try to exude this earlier in the ball game? Well, you see the energy from that Mike Phillips actually brings to the uh, Bison. And with him not being in the game, it kind of you didn't see anyone else really step up on the defensive end for the Bison. But you like to see that uh, fight and uh, tenacity from Phillips, and it carries over, and he's playing all the way until the end, although this game is almost, you can say, out of reach for the Bison. You know, but I'm sure Coach Nickelberry loves seeing his guys play it all the way through. It shows that they're not quitters. They're going to continue to play and give it all they have from minute one to minute 40. And this is a goal the Aggies need to set for themselves. Let's see if we can hold um, the Bison under 40 points in this final three minutes. That would be something that uh, defensive-wise, as a team, the Aggies can definitely look forward to as Witter penetrates, gets it over to Powell, Power over to Underwood in the corner to Louise Me. Three-point shot for Louise Me. It's no good and tipped in by Austin Witter. Three minutes, three seconds remaining in the game. The Aggies up 55-34 over the Howard University Bison. Strong move by Frazier, and Frazier draws contact, and that foul will be the fifth foul on Jeremy Underwood. And it will put Frazier at the line, shooting one and one. Put your hands together for number three, Jeremy Underwood. And that's great uh, defensive and great play by Jeremy Underwood in this game, coming off the bench, being a great producer for the Aggies and a spark off the bench as Lamont Middleton, after a long rest, will return in the game for the Aggies. I know that Middleton was probably thinking, well, this game is over. Uh, coach is just going to sit me out for the next match. And Frazier goes to the line and hits the first free throw. So with all the fouls, it's given uh, Howard an opportunity to uh, – creep towards the 40-point mark without time running off the clock. And this time, Frazier knocks down two to make cut the lead to 55-36, a 19-point lead by a and This is the time when the Aggies have to continuously to play all the way to the end, just like the Bison. The Bison are continually fighting all the way to the end, and that's what the Aggies need to begin to do, correction, need to do as they get it in. A nice pass from Louise Me over to Bruce Beckford. Beckford. Looks like Beckford came up hurt a little bit. He's calling for, for somebody to come in for him. And that time, Leary with a dunk opportunity. The ball just goes right through his hands. And we hope that's nothing severe from the freshman. As for the first time in the game, number 15, Dominique Bellantale comes in the game replacing, replacing Beckford. And Beckford is kind of wincing on the side. And we hope it's nothing uh, serious. It looked like he came down funny after the dunk. I don't know if it was something in, the, in his back or what, but we hope it won't be much serious. He's, he's going over and trying to stretch him out a little bit. Witter tries to get to the turnover by Witter. And here comes the Bison, 57-36, as Frazier pulls up from three. Shot is no good. Rebounded by Adrian Powell. And they get the ball back into the hands of Middleton. So under two minutes left in the ball game. Ben Tolley with the dunk. And that's a great pass 
Also from uh, Middleton to Louise Man. Louise Man unselfishly finding his teammate. Uh, Bell and Tarley for the easy slam. Now, still by Louise, Louise Man. Now, Adrian Powell. That's two dunks in a row for the Aggies. Correction, three dunks in a row for the Aggies and a quick timeout. And it's just only a substitution timeout from A&T to get some of the uh, reserve players in the game. I'll tell you what, Louise May showed his, uh, his unselfishness right there in those last three possessions. Two assists, a steal, and a kick. I mean, you got to love what you see out of this guy. And it, with the game really over, he's still doing these positive things for the Aggies. And number 33, Wayland Silverman comes back into the game for the Aggies. So it's been an overall performance, but what I would like to see, if the Aggies can maintain their defensive, t uh, their defensive uh, pressure on the Bison and try to actually keep their goal right now, they held their uh, opponents to 40 points against FAMU. Let's see if they can do the same thing against Howard University for the remainder of this game. 128 remaining in the game. And he's still playing good pressure defense out front. And that's great defense by Khalid King. A tough shot by uh, Ford is no good. Rebounded by King, but it, uh, actually taken away by Howard. And so uh, one minute, ten seconds remaining. It comes forward again, strong penetration by Ford, and Ford gets into traffic. And this foul will be on Khalid King, the freshman out of Columbus, Ohio. So right now on the court for the Aggies, number 10, Sean Stewart, number 21, R.J. Buck, number 15, Dominique Van Tarly, number 2, Khalid King, and number 33, Waylon Silverin at the line. For the Bison, number 22, Brandon Ford. Ford misses the first. Now it's a matter of A&T just boxing out and rebounding and then kind of being patient on the offensive end. He hits the second to cut the lead. It's 61, 37, 24-point lead by A&T. And the Aggies are... Did a great, de a great job tonight on defense. Under a minute left in the ball game. So we'll see a t moving the ball around. And try to get it inside to Tarley, which was open. Now he gets to R.J. Buck. Strong move by Buck. He's in traffic. Gets it back out to Sean Stewart. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Strong move by R.J. Buck baseline. And it's a jump ball possession, so it goes back to the Bison. So it's 40 seconds. 40.5 seconds remaining in the game. The Aggies have a comfortable 61-37 point lead over the visiting Bison. And here's and Khalid King out pressuring the ball. Now Sean Stewart. Anti still Tolly tries to get the steal and, du and, and does. And does, yes. Waylon Silveran with the steal. And now 25 seconds, 20 seconds, under 20 left in the game. And it looks like Anti will accomplish that goal of not giving up 40. They'll hold Howard to 37 points. And this is a great goal for, and I know that the fans are, are applauding the great defense as well as offensive play by the Aggies, as the Aggies now have accomplished another goal. They held another mini athletic team to under 40 by holding the Howard Bison to 37. So our final score here, 61, 37, North Carolina a t with a commanding 24 point win. And our player of the game, of course, Adrian Powell with 22 points, 21 in the first half. It really sparked the act. Well, he was definitely a, a better fact in the first half. Unstoppable. I mean, was just hot on shooting. And he came in and he did what was needed by the Aggies to prevail on this 61-37 point win. And folks, uh, just to check it, it was 24 points. Our producer just told me with the last dunk, 24. So Adrian Powell, our player of the game. Folks, for Terry Cooper, I'm Walter Johnson. I want to thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back again Friday for swimming, Saturday for basketball, and next Monday for basketball. Until then, God bless, and we'll see you.